Hello and welcome back to my channel. Jacob Payton here and I'm going to be talking about Goblin by Josh Mallerman. And on the back it says, Goblin seems like any other ordinary small town, but with master storyteller Josh Mallerman as your tour guide, you'll discover the secrets that hide behind its closed doors. From a man willing to prove his love piece by piece to a man whose fear threatens to drive him to madness. From a big game hunter undertaking the greatest hunt of his life to an aspiring magician who wishes to learn from the greatest in the world and gets more than he bargained for. From a zookeeper who feels a mysterious kinship with the animals in his care to a maze so elaborate that no one has ever solved it. These six novellas tell the story of a place where the rain is always fail falling. Nighttime is always near and your darkest fears and desires await. Welcome to Goblin. So yeah, I enjoyed this a lot. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, this is um, basically about a creepy small town named Goblin and is told through six novellas that kind of call back to each other as it goes on which I thought was really fun because it does kind of give you the sense of the goblin community quote unquote um I have not read a lot of Josh Mallerman I have yeah I don't know why um I also haven't seen I think his movie Bird Box either but I've heard him on podcasts and stuff so I don't huh goblin might be the first thing I've read by him which is very odd, and I did not think about that before this moment, but I think that might be 100% true. Either way, I really enjoyed it. Um, I know that collections aren't everybody's thing. That being said, this is not really a short story collection, so if that's why you don't want to you know, come and be on the fence to get into it, I would say overlook that. This is a collection of not novellas. Some of these are quite long. Um, most of the novellas have chapters within them, so, you know, they, they are sizable. You're, it's meaty read, I don't know. Uh, some people don't like short reads. Um, this is not a short short read, I don't know. I, I enjoyed this. Um, uh, my favorites were probably the Zookeeper story as well as the Big Game Hunter story. There is a lot of goblin lore we are given and I'll be honest, I really hope that in later works he decides to return to Goblin because this town was a lot of fun. Think Fear Street for adults if anyone, you know, if you guys are familiar with Goosebumps or Fear Street, Goblin is a town where anything can happen. You know, it's supposedly built on cursed land that was stolen by Native Americans and since then, a lot of weird stuff has happened to a lot of residents over the years. You know, people going mad, people just walking into the forest one day and disappearing, and other unexplained events. And of course, because they live under this constant weirdness, so to speak, a lot of people just kind of shrug it off as time goes on. And we kind of see this a lot as it goes from novella to novella, right? If it calls back to one of the stories, for instance, um, the people just kind of shrug it off of whatever happened to that character. I do think that it's within the later, I would say like the last three novellas, we start to get a lot of the deep lore of Goblin, especially everything with the owls. Um, the owls in this are really cool. Um, they're kind of monstrous, but also kind of benevolent, if that makes sense. They're supposed to be like this rare form of giant owl that live within the deep forest of Goblin, uh, of Goblin, which is supposedly haunted by a witch that will take people if they go too deep in the forest after dark, which I also thought was really interesting. The fact that even in a town as terrifying as Goblin can be, it also has its own brand of folklore. Um, but it also has rules, which I very much enjoy. I like when horror has rules, right? Urban legends are supposed to have rules. You do one thing, something else happens. But if you follow the rules, then the bad thing doesn't happen. And we do see this, especially in the later stories. Um, yeah, we are given a lot in this collection. I would absolutely love it. Uh, like I said, if you know, we get some other works that take place within Goblin because I have so many questions. Uh, for instance, in the Magician story, we kind of learn that there might be, you know, I don't want to spoil too much, but there might be some people that go around taking bodies from graves, like a lot of them, and feeding from them, and we don't know why, right? They just kind of go into the sky, and I would love to know why. Um, the same with the maze. We learn a lot about 
kind of the history of Goblin, uh, especially from the people that go into the woods and also kind of how madness and Goblin can lead to magic. And I would kind of like to know how deep that goes and what that means. Um, basically a lot of questions. Uh, but that being said, I think that's how you know a book is really good when you think about it, you know, when it like way after the fact that you're done with it. I finished this book months ago and I still think about a lot of the novellas and the questions that I still have. And I think that's fun, right? I mean, that's the whole point. That's how you know a book is good is when it leaves you kind of wanting more, even once the stories have been wrapped up. Um, that is one thing. All these novellas had definite endings. Um, now, when, what I mean by a definite ending is while it might have some open threads still, the central plot was finished. I know that is something a lot of people get upset about with uh, novella collections or even short story collections is when all the stories are open-ended or the endings are just super ambiguous, which has definitely been something that I've seen in a lot of newer modern horror. And while that's fun for a couple stories, it definitely, I understand it getting annoying if it is the entire collection, and that is not the case with this, so you know, if that's something that you're worried about, don't be, that doesn't really happen in Goblin. This would make an amazing miniseries, um, kind of in the way that Cabinet of Curiosities is. I will say that if you, if you liked that, I think you will like this. Um, all of these are written in such a way that I could easily see them on the screen. Yeah, I don't know, this was a lot of fun. I don't really know what else to say about it. I don't really wanna spoil any of the novellas because they all do have their own particular twist. And I think the fun is reading them and finding out more about this creepy, creepy town. So yeah, I like this. Um, I definitely need to read more Josh Mallerman. Uh, if there is a starting point of where y'all think I should start with Josh Mallerman, you know, let me know in the comments below. I, I will obviously watch Bird Box at some point because I do know that is one of his big things. Um, I like this. Uh, if you didn't like it or you liked it, you didn't like it, let me know in the comments below as well. Also, if you know of any other like novella collections or any, either even something that is more of like Fear Street for adults, kind of in the same vein that this was, let me know in the comments because I would definitely be interested in checking that out. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.